We must remember always that accusation is not proof, and that conviction depends upon evidence and due process of law. It's a bill that has received very little attention, but may make free speech a felony and seriously restrict your right to political protest. Just signed into law by the president, H.R. 347 gives federal agents sweeping powers to arrest and bring felony charges against citizens engaged in protests where the Secret Service is present. Joining us now with more, Fox News senior judicial analyst, good friend, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, the thing that strikes out, jumps out off the page, felony? Yeah, felony means more than a year in jail. This is not like a traffic ticket for standing and protesting. The type of thing that for 230 years Americans took for granted because it was protected by the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech has actually been abridged. But legislation the president signed last Thursday, supported overwhelmingly by both parties, with very, very little public debate and very little debate in Congress, basically allows Secret Service agents to decide side where there are no free speech zones, not speech zones, no free speech zones. And anybody by the Secret Service, can, protected by the Secret Service, can ask those agents to ban protests wherever they are. So I can think of three violations, speech violations, association violations, the right to petition the government for a redress of your grievances. What good is free speech if the people in the government are so far away from you that they can't hear you? Judge, what about keeping our elected officials safe? Keeping our elected officials safe is entirely different from insulating them from protest. The fact that the president is going to a hotel up the block should not bar you from standing across the street with a sign or with a bullhorn saying what you think about the president's policies. That is not a threat to him, and it is a part of American history since day one that we have the right to speak freely to, about, and against those in the government. Okay, Judge, do you think this is going to be one of those laws that um, is on the books, but not enforced? I think it's one of those laws that's going to be enforced when the government wants it enforced. The problem, Eric, is it is puts a lot of um, unbridled discretion in the hands of Secret Service agents who may very well say, you know what, boss, you've had a rough day. We'll keep everybody away from you. Or, you know what, boss, this crowd likes you, so we're going to let them, uh, we're going to let you hear them. That's uh, suppressing speech on the basis of its content, and that has been expressly prohibited by the First Amendment since day one. What, what dictates the Secret Service is present? In other words, aren't they present all over Washington, D.C.? Well, they are, and that's a great question, because this law also allows the president to give Secret Service protection to whoever he wants. I'll give you a bizarre example. His campaign managers are coming to Washington to confer with him about the campaign. He can give them Secret Service protection. And then the Secret Service can say to the kids in the streets, you can't shout at David Axelrod, because the, the campaign manager, because the Secret Service is protecting him. This, this is a slow, creeping destruction of some of our basic liberties, and the president signed it in secret. And now some of the Secret Service are going to be... be uh providing services for the candidates now as well. Right? Correct. So Correct. People aren't going to be able to have their opinion about the candidates? If now? the Secret Service so declares, you won't be able to shout at Judge them. The people have been threatened in the media to even mention this issue. We got information that it was Soros operatives. We're not entirely sure who it was, but we know that there's a major media blackout. We can prove 100% there's a blackout at Fox. Yeah. We name names. Before we're done, we'll do it. And Fox is not the same channel it was even a year or two ago. This is beyond amateuristic. I, I don't even know what you call this. <laughs> this president and his administration, in my view, represent the greatest set of lawbreakers that have run the federal government in our lifetimes. In one top secret mission. Your mission is simple, Mr. Obama. Win one last election to gain unchecked flexibility, weaken our defenses, and fundamentally transform the world. Dimitri will transmit the information. I transmit this information to Vladimir and Ms. Denver. Just my election, I am more flexible. We know less about Obama than we know about anyone who's ever been president of the United States. You have a president who is a dictator. A usurper and a charlatan. I think the president 
is dangerously close to totalitarianism. A few months ago, he was saying, the Congress doesn't count. The Congress doesn't mean anything. I'm going to rule by decree and by administrative regulation. Now he's basically saying the Supreme Court doesn't count. It doesn't matter what they think. They can't review our legislation. That would leave just him as the only branch of government standing. Uh, here, is, by the way, is the weather underground bomber, the terrorist. The FBI said the Weather Underground Organization, which took credit for the bombing, is the same radical group which was responsible for the bombing of the U.S. Capitol in 1971 and the Pentagon in 1972. It's not going to be just two more years of this mild socialist, uh, Leninist, you know, slow movement. It's going to escalate and ratchet up. He wants, a, he wants an insurrection. He wants a pretext. He wants his Kristallnacht. He wants to take the guns. He wants to arrest people. He wants to detain people for their own safety. He wants to do all the things that we've feared at our worst. We can stay home. We can refuse to participate. We can say, you know what? There is a third option. And the third option is we don't participate. We don't vote. The governor of Arizona should veto the bill. And if she doesn't, the president of the United States, Barack Obama, should assert federal government's preeminent role in regulating and enforcing our nation's immigration law. The lunacy of rounding up people because they look a certain way or are suspected of being in violation of immigration statutes can only lead to one thing. Violations of people's basic fundamental... Oh, kiss my behind! You violated our political rights, our legal rights, our health rights. I'm sick of this double talk from these criminals! How much can we take of this garbage? They have Congress representing them. Illegal aliens, think of how far you've fallen as an American. Think of what your father was compared to you. You worm you listening to this show. Think of what your grandfather was compared to you, you lousy worms. You know, I'm so fed up with the American male, I could scream. You're nothing compared to your father and your grandfather. They never would have let these people represent illegal aliens over you. You let them run wild over your country. You know what? You deserve to lose your country. You deserve to lose everything because you lost your self-respect. Look what we have in the White House. Take a look at what we have in the White House because you're nothing compared to your father. Would your father have ever let a, a Barack Obama into the White House? Not because he's uh, of mixed race. Don't, don't twist my words. But because he is of unknown background. We we don't know where he was born. We don't know what the hell he wrote while he was in college. We don't know what his grades were, but we know this. We know that he's following the Marxist-Leninist pathway to heaven. We know that he lied during his campaign. We know that everything he said was a lie. We don't even know who funded him. We know that Goldman Sachs gave him almost a million dollars, but he won't give that back. Well, who else gave him the money that he used to get into office? We don't know who gave him the money, but we know this. We know that much of it came from foreign sources. We know that much of it came from overseas. We know that much of it came from people who hate America and hate America's freedoms. And all of this happened because while I was on this radio show, screaming my guts out for 16 years, trying to wake you up like Paul Revere himself, many of you laughed at me. Many of you called me names. Many of you called me the problem. Many of you called the illegal alien the solution. Many of you call the criminals the solution and the patriots the problem. We've fallen to such an extent that Navy SEALs right now are on trial for their very freedom because one of them may have punched an arrested terrorist in the stomach while they were interrogating him. That's after the terrorists killed some of their friends. Can you imagine your father's military putting men on trial for punching an enemy in the stomach? Look what you've let happen. Take a look at who's running your Defense Department. Take a look at the Fort Hood Massacre and how they're covering up for Major Hassan because he's a Muslim! They spit on Christianity. They vomit on the church! But they protect Muslims. And what do you do? Nothing. Internet pornography. Take me out to the ball game, you schmucks, you. You got just what you deserve. You got Obama in the presidency. You got Schumer in the Senate. You got Gutierrez in the Congress. And as a result, you've lost your country. You're giving your children nothing. You've turned your country over to a bunch of bums. And your children are going to inherit nothing because you failed as a father.
Because you failed as a man. That's why America has Obama. That's why America has Gutierrez. And that's why the illegal aliens are virtually laughing in our face. So finally, the citizens of Arizona say enough is enough. You've killed enough of our cops. You've destroyed enough of our farmland. You've killed enough of our ranchers. We're going to pass a law giving the police the right to stop people and ask them whether they're here legally or illegally. And maybe we'll put some teeth in our laws. And what happens? Gutierrez, representative of who? Representative Luis Gutierrez, representing who? Representing the illegal aliens. I didn't know the illegal aliens were a state. I didn't know that the illegal aliens consti uh, 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 comprised an entire district in Congress where they had their own representative, but apparently Representative Luis Gutierrez, Democrat of Illegal, I-L, Democrat of Illegal, I-L, threatens Obama and threatens America and says to the people of Arizona, drop dead, you have no power, I, Luis Gutierrez, I have more authority than you do. That all of you crackers in uh, Arizona can drop dead, I, Luis Gutierrez, I'm so powerful that I'm going to have the government override your vote. Well, I got news for you, Gutierrez and everybody else. This is a new dawn in America. The people have had it up to here, and they're taking the country back from the illegal aliens. They're taking it back from the crooks on Wall Street. They're taking it back from the illegitimate bastards in Congress who have stolen our birthright and stolen our nation. This is just the beginning. You keep threatening us. You keep threatening us and see where it ends up. You'll find out that the people are not such schmucks. You'll find out very soon that the American people still have fiber left in them. You'll find out that not all of them are the putzes that you think they are. Now, it's hard to have fun when you have a Marxist president who is destroying jobs, and you have a first lady gallivanting around the world, spending money like the Queen of England was in the uh, 19th century or the 18th century, being snubbed by the president of South Africa and it not appearing in the news because they cover the backsides of the president and the first lady like never before in history. It's very difficult, and that's why I tell you we're going to have some fun in the Savage Nation. In addition to all of the news of the day, which I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do something that continues the discussion we started yesterday. Remember I was saying, how did we go from a time when I was a kid, for example, when even poor Italian people who were in my neighborhood, grew up in my neighborhood, they looked up to opera stars. They, even the poorest Italians could sing an aria or try to sing an aria. Their role models were people such as Mario Lanza, later on Pavarotti. And take a look at the degeneracy today of a culture where Jersey Shore and the Sopranos are held up as the role models for Italians. Or take a look at the Jewish people. When I was a boy, Jonas Salk was held up as a role model. Take a look at what we have now, Anthony Weiner. When I was a boy, Martin Luther King Jr. was a role model for black people. Take a look at the rapper garbage we have today in the United States of America. And so without further ado, let's go to the wonderful sound production describing the role models and uh, the leadership of the past to the present from dignity to depravity on the savage nation we have fun with fearless i mean we go into the room we kill it we go yeah. into the club we kill it nice. photo shoots we kill it we're in miami we're killing it on the beach we're killing it that's just how we do since day one i believe that the future generations will look back upon us and judge us as to whether we have been wise or whether we have been profligate and wasteful. I will not yield to the gentleman, and the gentleman will observe regular order. The gentleman will observe regular order. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I said a hip so there we go from Pavarotti to the, the degenerate uh, filth of Jersey Shore the illiterate morons from Jonas Salk to Anthony Weiner from Martin Luther King Jr. to a, a, a rapper who can hardly speak the English language now let's go to the next one which we put together we're going to compare for those of you who are not of any of those ethnicities or proclivities, we're going to go to a comparison uh, between Dylan Thomas, a Welsh poet, and Amy Winehouse, and otherwise nobody who somebody doesn't love. 
We're then going to go to Edward R. Murrow compared with Chris Matthews, a man who belongs in a uh, an Alzheimer's ward, in my opinion. We're then going to show you a, a Hispanic gentleman named Luis Alvarez, one of the great physicists who you probably never heard of, who got where he was without affirmative action, without the government helping him along. And then we're going to compare Luis Alvarez, scientist, Nobel Prize winner, with Repre Representative Gutierrez. Then we're going to compare Madame Curie to Lady Gaga right now on The Savage Nation. Do not go gentle into that good night. Do they understand that there's no real war against ISIS? How many times have we seen that clown who looks like an usher come out from the Defense Department and tell us that today we destroyed two trucks? So let's say it cost us $35 million and, and these incredible pilots to blow up two Toyota trucks with three ragheads in it. Why are they not blowing up any of the M1A Sherman, t uh, sorry, the, the, sorry, the Abrams tanks that were stolen from the Iraqi military when those cowards in the Iraqi military threw down their weapons and abandoned their bases? They took our Abrams tanks, remember ISIS did? Have you yet seen one Abrams tank blown up? No. Why? Because this entire war against ISIS is a sham. It's a pretext for invading Syria, taking down Assad, and leading to the wholesale slaughter of Christians and other Alawites in Syria. We're about to see another Holocaust occur. Why is this allowed to go on? How can the West permit this? Because there is no West anymore. There is no West. The leadership has been compromised, taken over. I'm actually begging those in the military who know what's going on to speak out long before they're retired and suddenly grow a pair of uh, you-know-what. I love all these retired generals who are sudden, uh, uh, what do you say, regular guests on Fox and CNN telling us all of the bad things that happened when they were generals. The trick is to speak out while you are a general, not after you're you know, retired. This is it. We have no time left. The damage that has been done to the world by gun control and what happened to people after gun control was passed by despotic rulers such as Charles Schumer. You've got despotic Democrats in America. You've got street rats on MSNBC who have no education whatsoever. They gave them a suit and a haircut, and they get up there and talk about gun control with fake righteous indignation without understanding what it leads to. 1929, the Soviet Union established gun control. What happened? Attention, MSNBC. From 1929 to 1953, 20 million dissidents were rounded up and exterminated. 1911, Turkey established gun control. What happened? From 1915 to 1917, 1.5 million Armenians were rounded up and exterminated. They had no guns. Germany established gun control in 1938. From 39 to 45, 13 million Jews and others were rounded up and exterminated. They had no guns. China, gun control, 1935. From 48 to 52, 20 million political dissidents without guns were rounded up and exterminated in China. Guatemala established gun control in 1964. What happened? Attention, Gerald Nadler. From 64 to, 80, to 81, 100,000 Mayan Indians were rounded up and exterminated. They had only bows and arrows, no guns. Attention, Charles Schumer. Uganda established gun control in 1970. From 71 to 79, 300,000 Christians were rounded up and exterminated in Uganda. Cambodia, Pol Pot, establishes gun control in 1956. From 75 to 97, no guns, one million educated people, anyone with eyeglasses, were rounded up and exterminated. 56 million people rounded up and exterminated in the 20th century directly as a result of their inability to defend themselves against despotic governments. So you say, well, okay, that was there, but Charles Schumer, Turbin Durbin, uh, Gerald Nadler, Harry Reid, Barbara Boxer, Dianne Feinstein, Barack Obama, they're not like Pol Pot. They're not like Joseph Stalin. They're good people. They're modern people. They're Democrats. They wouldn't round anybody up and exterminate them. This headline from the 19, 1970 says it all. Four bombs at Murtaugh Home, notorious uh, terror group, the Weather Underground, claiming responsibility for an attack on the family of a New York state Supreme Court justice. The bombing was led by radical Bill Ayers, the same guy screen right, uh, who eventually formed a relationship of some sort with Democrat presidential nominee Barack Obama. While my parents, my brother, sister, and I were asleep in our house, 
Uh, the Weather Underground uh, launched an attack on our family home, set off uh, at least three, possibly four bombs, one of them under the gas tank of the family car. Car bomb. Looking to kill us. The New York cell of the Weather Underground uh, that launched the attack on my family. Mm -hmm. uh, three weeks later, at Bill Ayer's direction, they were assembling bombs in Greenwich Village right. in order to attack uh, the officers' club at Fort Dix, New Jersey. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious.